Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Recently I took a drive through the desert for a couple of hours to visit a mall that I had never been to before. This is Tucson Mall in Tucson, Arizona, and this is the one mall in Tucson that I had not checked out yet. This mall opened on March 22, 1982 and is the largest mall in Tucson at almost 1.3 million square feet. Let's take a quick look at the map and store directory. Now, this mall is not a dead mall. It seems to be doing okay, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of empty storefronts. It's anchored by a Macy's, a Forever 21, a JCPenney, a Dillard's, and an empty Sears. The reason that I wanted to check this mall out is because it is the biggest one in Tucson, and also because I heard it had a lot of neat stuff in it, like that Kansai RC Dojo right there, which we'll check out in a minute. But I also noticed in pictures of this mall that it still seemed to have a lot of classic mall aesthetic. Here's a look inside the RC Dojo, and this looks like so much fun. This is the second time that I've seen an RC car place like this show up in a mall, and I wouldn't mind seeing more of them show up in malls. There were a lot of people that stopped to watch for a minute or two while they were walking by, and malls need things to keep people interested in being there besides just stores. You need interesting stuff for them to see while walking in between those stores. Something that I found interesting here is that even though the end of this corridor leads to an empty Sears, this is not the least lively corridor of the mall, even though this is the only empty anchor currently. Even at the busiest of malls, if there's a corridor that leads to an empty Sears, that's usually the darkest and quietest place in the mall. Most of the storefronts down here seem to be occupied. You know, the only thing that's missing down there is some plants, and, and an occupied anchor, obviously. But that would just look so much more amazing under the skylight if there were some plants down there along the escalators. I'm kind of surprised the Sears sign is still there. That location's been closed since 2020, and it seems like they usually remove the signs within a year or so. I am not surprised to see a relaxation station down here. And here's a look inside to see what Sears seems to do best now. Not too far from that Sears is a store called Gamer's Warehouse, and this might be my favorite place in this mall. I mean, it looks really great from the front, obviously, with the big Kratos statue there and then arcade games right there in the front. But once you start poking around in here, you find out this place is actually kind of amazing. I mean, it's already pretty amazing with a working NBA Jam cabinet. And they've got Donkey Kong there. There's an NFL Blitz cabinet in here. There's Mortal Kombat, though, unfortunately, it's not working right now. And they also sell video games. I've noticed that some retro game shops are integrating arcade cabinets into their stores, but this place takes it to a whole other level. When you go to a retro game shop, you expect to see Nintendo, NES games, and Sega CD games, and Atari, and PlayStation stuff, but what I don't expect to see is right next to all of that is a row of five Mario Kart arcade cabinets. And as if this place wasn't cool enough already, there's a time portal here as well. In the back is a full-blown retro arcade down to the carpet. This is how mall arcades used to be. Dark, cramped, but with carpet obnoxious enough that you could still see it in all of the darkness. I had the biggest, dopiest grin on my face the entire time I was walking around through here. There were some arcade games here that I haven't seen in a while. It was great to see some Play Choice 10 cabinets, and they had more than one. We'll take a closer look at one in a little bit. There's also a Hang On cabinet here. I love that game. All of the Sega Super Scroller games are pretty great. It really did feel like a lot of the arcades and malls that I used to go to in the late 80s and early 90s when I was a kid. When you first walk into Gamer's Warehouse, it's not obvious that all of this is tucked in back here. It's almost kind of like a secret hidden arcade. It's a shame that some of the machines are out of order, but that was actually really common at mall arcades as well. When I saw that Jurassic Park, the Lost World arcade game there, I thought to myself, oh, there's a newer arcade game here, and then I remembered that that was released in 1997, and then my back hurt. That candy machine there's a nice touch, and I love seeing Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat next to each other. That was the big arcade rivalry when I was a kid, is which one was better, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter 2. Personally, I like them both equally, and I probably played both of them about the same amount. I really wish there were malls in the Phoenix area that had something like this. This is just fantastic. I really did not want to leave here. That is a great view. 
There really is a pretty great selection of games from throughout the years. There's another one of those Nintendo Play Choice 10 cabinets. I have a lot of nostalgia for those. It's too bad this World Series baseball game wasn't working. I love those pinball-like baseball games. Oh no, there's Bad Dudes. That's a game that I remember playing at the movie theater a lot when I was a kid, along with that Robocop arcade game. Really, the only thing that's missing in here is a couple of pinball tables, but I get why they don't have them. That would take up too much space. Here's a closer look at one of the Nintendo Play Choice 10 cabinets. I remember seeing these pretty frequently in Pizza Huts. I had a Nintendo NES at home as a kid and I loved that thing, so I always thought these were really cool. They had up to 10 Nintendo NES games loaded in them jukebox style, and they were really a cool way to be able to try out new games. They were pretty eye-catching in the arcade too with their two monitors. We've probably spent enough time in the past. Let's head back out into the mall. Now here's something I didn't notice when I first walked into Gamer's Warehouse, and that's this pile of old cell phone screens here in the display window. They do phone repair as well, and I think that's a pretty hilarious way to advertise their phone repair services. At this point, I'd already been in the mall for a while, and I hadn't really even made it much past this corridor yet, so I figured I should probably go check the rest of it out. I filmed this footage on a Saturday evening, and at this point, the sun was starting to go down. Closing time was in about two hours, and that's one of my favorite times to visit a mall is a few hours before closing time. Even malls that aren't dead tend to start clearing out a few hours before closing time, and they're not nearly as busy as they are in the afternoon. There's the Dillard's, which was originally a Diamonds department store when the mall opened, but it converted to a Dillard's when Dillard's bought them. Most of the older and more interesting malls in the Phoenix area are gone now, unfortunately, so it was really nice to visit one that was built in the early 80s and doesn't seem like it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Across the way there is the JCPenney, and that's an original anchor to the mall, and we'll take a closer look at that towards the end of the video. Even with the sun setting, all of those huge expansive skylights really do let a great amount of natural light into the mall. They really do not build malls like this anymore. You know, looking down at the center point of this mall, it kind of reminds me of the one at Pointe Hills Mall, or Twin Pines Mall from Back to the Future. I need to get back there and check that one out again. I love that the center point of this mall has an almost entirely glass ceiling. And there's also a working fountain down there. That food court and Arizona Avenue sign down there caught my eye because at this point I was getting pretty hungry. So I made my way downstairs and started heading up this Arizona Avenue area, which is kind of interesting. It's basically a long strip that's lined by smaller shops. Some of them are almost stall sized. And there's things like this little vending machine nook, which I found kind of interesting leading up to the food court. It almost kind of seems like it could be an arcade, but it's really not. It's just a bunch of prize games that are going to rip you off and some vending machines with snacks and drinks. It looks like you can get yourself some mall tuna. Mmm. Really, I think this little vending machine nook is probably the saddest looking thing in this mall. None of this really sounds very appetizing when you can smell the mall food court smells wafting their way down this Arizona Avenue section. You know, this almost feels like a big employee break room, and I imagine that's who mostly uses this as mall employees. Playing cards, that's a weird random thing to see in a vending machine at the mall. I don't know why you would need to buy that here. And they've got some random stickers and capsule toys. And a massage chair. Just one, though. You know, I've always wondered how much revenue a place like this takes in. This Arizona Avenue corridor definitely seemed to be doing a good job of kind of funneling and concentrating the food court smells, or maybe it just seemed that way because I was really hungry. There is a pretty big food court here, although I guess that makes sense since this is the biggest mall in Tucson. They have a Sparrow here which is nice, and a lot of times I'll get that if a food court has it, but I wasn't in the mood for pizza. There was a lot of mall food court staples here. They had a Panda Express, but I'm actually not a very big fan of Panda Express. They also had a kebab place. They've got Charlie's Philly cheesesteaks there. But I ended up going for All-American Burger. A cheeseburger, some fries, and a Coke sounded pretty good, and of course the neon lights caught my eye and drew me to this place. 
The cheeseburger and fries were pretty good. The cheeseburger had everything on it. It had lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, mayo, mustard. And the fries were actually really good. What wasn't great though was the price. That burger, fries, and Coke was almost $18. And yes, I know, blah, 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 inflation. But you know what? I don't care. $18 for burgers, fries, and a Coke at the mall is batshit crazy. And I, I was going to do a positive video, so I'm, I'm going to calm down. At least my stomach wasn't making noises anymore, which made it easier to enjoy how awesome the rest of the mall is. I really do like that even though they renovated this place in 2003, that they didn't seem to take it too far. They left a lot of the mall's original details, like how those columns look. And I know that styling of the columns is original to the mall, because you can see it in the 1987 film Can't Buy Me Love, which was filmed here. I really do like filming malls that were used in old movies, so that's another reason why I wanted to check out Tucson Mall. This is one of the reasons why I like malls that have a lot of skylights, because they tend to have less artificial lighting, so later in the evening they tend to get darker, and it changes the whole vibe of the place. That Hot Topic there might have the smallest door that I've ever seen a Hot Topic have. I could see somebody walking right through here and not even noticing that there's a Hot Topic there. They seem to keep this place pretty clean. The only cup that I found laying around was this one, and someone may actually come back for it. I noticed that there was a fountain down here at this end of the mall, and I was pretty excited when I first saw it, but then I noticed it's not working right now. I hope this is something they plan on fixing. There is a working fountain in the center point of the mall, but looking inside this one, this looks like it would be the cooler of the two fountains. I bet when it's working it looks great underneath this skylight with a bunch of natural light illuminating it. A lot of malls that have fountains removed them a long time ago and I hope that is never the case for the fountains here. This end of the mall down here with the Macy's is another one of my favorite parts of this place. I love that it's circular when not much else of the mall is circular. And I really like the way that they laid the tile out down here. And of course, I love the ceiling, in that it's almost completely glass. I really like the way it looks over here at night, and I'm sure it looks completely different during the day, but equally as awesome. Another detail that I like is the asymmetrical placement of the escalators. They really did make some interesting architectural choices in this mall. This is definitely one of the more visually appealing malls that I've had a chance to film. I eventually made my way back to the center point of the mall because I wanted to check out the working fountain that was here, and as you can see, it's okay. The other one had water, it looks like they would shoot up, that's why I think that one was probably the better of the two of these. Unfortunately, I couldn't film any fountain cam footage because there was a security guard pretty much standing right next to me while I was filming this, and I didn't feel like getting kicked out yet because there was still stuff that I wanted to see here, like this FYE store. These are becoming less and less common, and they're down to around a little over 200 stores now. I used to really like FYE stores when I was younger. I used to like to buy CDs and movies and things like that, but they don't seem to sell much of that anymore. It's just a lot of t-shirts and pop culture stuff now. It's almost like a diet hot topic in here. I wanted to come in here to look at records, but that's their entire selection. I think they have more vinyl pop figures than they have vinyl records. I did a video covering FYE a few years ago, and even just a few years ago it seemed like they did at least still devote a decent amount of their store space to things like records and movies and things, but now it's just a lot of junk it seems like. FYE is supposed to stand for 4 year entertainment, but none of this seems like entertainment products. When I was younger, FYE wasn't a store that you went to at the mall for t-shirts. A few years ago, FYE was purchased by a Canadian record chain called Sunrise Records, and I thought that would make these stores be more record store-like, but no, they're carrying things like giant Rice Krispie treats. Which is again, one of the last things that I would think to come to FYE for. At this point it was getting pretty close to closing time, which was a little bit disappointing because there was still a lot of the mall that I didn't get a chance to check out, so I'm definitely going to have to come back here again. And I will come back here because I think this may have become one of my most favorite malls in Arizona. I think it's definitely the best mall in Tucson, Arizona. It 
really is a beautiful mall. Let's go ahead and start heading on out though, and let's do that through the JCPenney. I had mentioned at the beginning of the video that we would take a look at the JCPenney, and this is one of the original anchor stores to the mall. This is kind of another time portal-ish area of this mall. It feels very vintage department store in here. We're getting to one of my favorite parts of old department stores, which is the exit corridor that will have things like the portrait studio and the hair salon and the optical department. A lot of people call dead malls and old department stores liminal spaces. Well, I feel like these corridors are the ultimate liminal space inside of a mall. Liminal spaces are described as places of transition or of nostalgic appeal, and these corridors and department stores are definitely both of those things. But those are just my thoughts. What are your thoughts on Tucson Mall? I'd love to know down in the comments below. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. You know what? Hold on a minute. I'm not going to let this go. $18 for what's essentially a Whopper Jr., a handful of fries, and a Coke is absolutely ridiculous. I'm at a mall in Tucson, not a Disney park. Malls need to get their shit together when it comes to food court pricing. Okay, I'm done. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on my first trip to Tucson Mall. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed that mall, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.